But Chris has a piano. It's an upright that he's traveled with for years. Like, look at the keys on this thing. Wow, that's so fucking cool. Yeah, it's just like it's, it's his, almost like they painted. You know, it, it, with, it's it's electric. It's electronic. Oh. It's not. It's, but it's but it's just, it's like it's his piano. He digs it, and like I don't need a sign where. That's just sort of cool. That's very cool. I love the look of it. It's so shit. I wish I could photograph that. That's so fucking cool. I want to. I want to write Bob's movie. Hold on. You can do anything you want. I love it. Hey, oh, good morning, everybody. Come on already. We got a big day for you today. It's Wednesday, and we have, among other things, Chris Martin of Coldplay coming in, and I see his piano over there, and it's a very cool piano. We said to Chris, do you want a, a Steinway, similar to what we did with Billy Joel? And or Lady Gaga. Or Lady Gaga, Gaga which is a lot of fun. So uh, he said, no, nope, there's a piano I use. It's my piano that, uh, uh, you know, that travels with me. And it is the complete opposite of a Steinway, actually. Look at that thing. It's it a stand-up. It's a stand-up little piano, and it is... Uh, what, what would you call the finish on it? Uh, it looks like graffiti. <laughs> There's graffiti all over it, spray painted, very cool looking. And I, and I said to Gary, that's like the coolest little piano I ever saw. I wish I knew how to play piano. But that is his piano, and that's what he enjoys playing. And it's actually electric. It's an electric piano, Robin. I don't know if you know that. I did not know that. I haven't taken a complete look at it. Well, I took a complete look at it, and I still didn't know it was electric. <laughs> yeah. Lest anyone think that is not electric, they're wrong. My wife was so excited. She's a big Coldplay person. And she has a girl crush on Gwyneth Paltrow. I was going to say, I was thinking about that this morning, that she's a huge Gwyneth Paltrow fan. I know my wife would go down on... You know, like my wife is not into girls at all, and I know that, unless she wakes up from a stroke and suddenly is. <laughs> unless she has uh, a stroke. I feel like she would go down on Gwyneth Paltrow in a minute. I don't think so. I think she would. I think she's that hot for like her. to be her best friend. Yeah, yeah, that too. She'll admit <laughs> it. She has, ever since I've known her, she's like obsessed with... Yeah, I know. She always checks the website. Yeah. It's Gwyneth Paltrow all the time. Every picture she's in, she's beautiful. She just thinks... It, do you have that feeling? No, about, I no. don't like Gwyneth Paltrow. At, I, I mean, I shouldn't say this. But, well, listen, he, what does he care? It's not an attack on him. <laughs> and, and it's not, I don't know her as a person. I just don't find her my interesting wife, in movies or anything. My wife would cut your tits off. For I have oh, never oh, seen wow. that Shakespeare in Love. Can't watch it. You'll tell me you didn't love Shallow How. She was in a suit. That's why. I, I loved and it. Jack Black was there. <laughs> well, anyway, my wife adores her and loves Coldplay. Even went out and got the new album. That's, you know, she's way into the whole thing. Wow. But anyway, uh, Chris Martin is coming in. We have his piano here. And we'll talk, uh, you know, we'll sit and bullshit and, he's and play some British music. British or something, isn't he? Sure. <laughs> Absolutely, he's British. What are you talking about over there? And, How do you um, get America's sweetheart? Yeah. He even says, you know, he goes, I, I, I've read interviews of Chris Martin here and there. And he even says, you know, God, I, when I was growing up, I was such a geek. The idea that Gwyneth Paltrow would look at me, let alone marry me, he goes, I want to pinch myself. <laughs> he goes, this is crazy. <laughs> Which I find refreshing. All right. Uh, we're going to bring Chris Martin in, Coldplay. And uh, he's going to sing, man. Sounds good, man. We're going to do it. We're going to really do this. We're going to do it. We're going to do it. You're in the morning. Hey, Ronnie. How are you? Good morning, Chris. Hi, good morning. How are you doing? Good, how are you? I'm nervous. You are? Yes, You're making sir. your debut today. I know. This My way. one and only ever appearance. <laughs> you thinking this is a one and done? I think it's a once in a lifetime. Where you, am I going? Are in you here? going right in this room? Whichever. I was going to say hello to my, my friend. You got it. Uh, good morning. Thank you. It's the people that make it all happen. So, Chris, what are these uh, nerves about? Uh, just being interviewed by someone much more handsome than me. <laughs> it makes me terrified. I've got to go this way. All right, good luck today, Chris. Thank you very much. Hey, guys. Hi, Howard. How are you doing? How are you? Good to see you. Thanks for coming on. Thanks for having me. Good to have you Nice to meet you. Why don't you do your setup here? Thank you. I'll be right with you. Hi. Hello. How are you doing? Hi, I'm Scott. Nice Hi, to meet you. Scott, how are you Pleasure. Doing? Pleasure. Do you want 
the usual weapon in the studio. Yeah. Did you kill the, kill the show? I didn't kill it completely. You can kill it for now until he. But does Howard come through here as well? He will, yeah. 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 We'll kill it for now and then. Do you want to completely off for now? No, no. Okay. You want, a, you want a sound check? You want to play something and sing so we can continue that for Sounds good to me. <laughs> That's easy. <laughs> <laughs> this time in the morning is only a certain number. I hear you. Quality. You get. Oh, yeah, no, 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 no. Well, I'm honored. I'm actually very, very honored. Uh, of course, uh, everyone knows Chris Martin is the, uh, I guess, lead singer, writer of Coldplay, and uh, he is here with us right now. And He's right here. Hi, guys. How are you doing? Robin wants you so badly. Oh, here we go. I felt that in the corridor. <laughs> we had a moment. We had a little... <laughs> is this difficult for you being up this early? No, uh, sir. Most working musicians are night people. You almost have to be. You perform at night. You, you, uh, you, yeah. you Most of your career is at night. That's true. And so when I uh, heard you were coming on, I said, oh, he's going to be exhausted. He's going to tell us uh, his well, voice hurts. Well, most rock stars complain to us. That's right. No, I, I just treat this as a very late night. <laughs> you know you know what's funny with you? You are a very handsome man, a tall Thank man. Thank you. You are. Likewise. No, you're, very, you're a very uh, handsome guy. I know handsome people because right. I envy them. <laughs> and uh, I look at them and go, why don't I look like that? I think you're being a bit unfair on yourself. No, but before you became a rock star, you don't describe yourself as a ladies' man. You describe yourself as quite the opposite. Right. And I think a, most a people, man's man. You're a man's man. Yeah. But, but, but I think most people would uh, be surprised by that, right? I don't know. I can't, I can't comment. And you seem to have your head screwed on straight in the sense that you never went through the phase of womanizing. Right. My theory is that womanizers really hate women. I tried, but I was too young and nobody was interested. <laughs> you mean you got your... You, you, I was a terrible womanizer when I was 15, but no women were interested. Don't you think women, womanizers essentially hate women? Don't you believe that inside? Seriously. To be honest, I, have, I haven't really sat down and thought about it that deeply. You are a deep guy. You write songs. I would think that you are very deep. <laughs> but I don't, I don't sit down and think, let me think about those real famous womanizers and write some songs about it. Do you like being a rock star? Yes, sir. It's my dream come true. It is a dream come true. Yeah. At what age did you know I need to be a rock star? Uh, uh, Eleven. Did you dream about a, being a songwriter, a great songwriter? Yeah. Was that the dream? Yes, sir. That was the dream at 11 years old. Yeah. So and at 11, what are you doing? Are you already playing piano? Or? I mean, uh, you don't even have pubes at 11. I don't have what pubes. What are you doing? Nothing. I'm you just had, singing very high. You admit you had <laughs> no, no one's listening. You admit you had no pubes. <laughs> I admit that up to the age of 18. Is that true? Yes, sir. No, not twice. I'm exaggerating for radio, but it wasn't far off. Did puberty uh, come late to you? It came, uh, you know, Maybe towards the end time. of the day. It, it, it came late to you. you it came a little late. too late. For late the, uh, it seemed late at the time. Did you sit and wonder why don't uh, all the other boys have pubes and I don't? No, again, I didn't. I didn't. I, I think maybe I've blocked that out of my memory. <laughs> Did you ever write a song longing for pubes? About pubes. Well, apart from the song I long for pubes, I can't <laughs> think of one. No, but seriously, when you're 11 years old, yes. y y you know. It's like uh, yeah, but what do you see? What is what is inspiring you to have that thought? I think seeing Michael Jackson and. Uh, the same stuff that kids see now when they see Beyonce or Lady Gaga, yeah, you just yeah. think, wow. What a great life. And, and, and did your parents take you aside and listen? And they say, listen, schmuck, uh, I don't know who you think you are. They, my dad smacked the shit out of me. Did, was your father abusive to you? No, I'm joking. He, but uh, he, he, was, he was encouraging, actually. Because he, he was made to stay in rural England and do his dad's old job, if you see what I mean. So he was kind of, you, you should leave here and go and do what you want to do. So that, that was great. They didn't say anything to you like, who do you think you are to be a singer or songwriter? That's irresponsible. We want you to go to college. We want you to, to, to give up this uh, idea of being a singer-songwriter. They didn't no, say my, that to my you. My dad, he said it probably is, you know, he said it's unlikely to happen, but you should have a go. Really? Yeah. Uh, amazingly supportive. Well, yeah, and he said, you know, don't drop out of school or whatever, but, but he never said uh, you can't do that. Did he get you piano lessons? No, he got, but we had a piano and... Uh, so, yeah, yes and no is the answer. Are you a genius in that you taught yourself piano, that you didn't need to have no, anyone no. instruct you? You are not a genius. No, quite the opposite. You don't consider yourself a genius. You've, you've sold millions of albums, you've, you've written hit songs, but you're not a musical genius. I had a moment of thinking we were good uh, because we were very popular, and then someone told me that the Nazis were popular for a while. <laughs> so my, so my self-esteem went right back down oh, again. Dear. Is being a successful rock star hard work? Uh, no. 
That's a lie in a sense. You're being humble because... I'm not being humble because it's, you've got to put it in perspective. Isn't there years of playing clubs? Isn't there years of honing the craft, perfecting the, 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 the industry, learning how to play in front of a live uh, audience and turning them on? Is, is, isn't there sort of a, a uh, process? Crafts do what you do. Well, you've made records, right? You know how it is. Yeah, absolutely, I've made records. All of them bad. <laughs> <laughs> all of them bad or all in bed? That's what right. You all of them bad. Right. No, no, but no, no, in all seriousness. It is a difficult road. You never know if you're going to make it. You don't know yeah. if your songs are going to resonate with a lot of people, right. correct? That's true. Yeah. So, so taking on this career, you have to be a bit of a madman. Mm -hmm. You didn't have anything to fall back on. Did you go to college? Yeah, I did, yeah. Oh, you did? And what did you study? Uh, ancient history. And we, we, what was the idea, that I will be a history teacher <laughs> if uh, yeah, this doesn't work? Yeah, what can you work? do with that degree? Dude, that's even worse than claiming <laughs> to be a rock star. You, know you can be just very interesting at McDonald's while you give someone their burger. So you, you, uh, you, you went to college, you did the, that, and yeah, in the back... we were in a band at college. That was really... We were in London, and the excuse for being there was being at college, but we were just doing music all day. Are you being humble when you say there were really no women who, like, when a guy's in a band, even if it's not a super successful band right away, and you're in college, don't women, do women just flock to that? Yeah, you know? usually get groupies if do you can play and sing. The yeah. honest answer is, I think, uh, it's all about confidence. And right. being British and not famous yet, that doesn't give you so much confidence. You, you had no confidence? We, we, well, we, you know, in Britain, we're, we're kind of brought up not to have too much confidence, because we... I don't know why, but it's just the way it is. How old were you when you wrote your first song? Uh, Eleven. And what was that song? It was called Bohemian Rhapsody. Ah, excellent. It turned out it was by someone else. <laughs> yeah. So I had to go back to drawing board. No, it, was, it was a terrible song about, I can't remember what. You don't know what the first song it was is? About, it, was, exactly, it was actually about uh, people being more obsessed with Princess um, Sarah Ferguson's tits than... Uh, what was really happening in the world. It at was quite 11. a media savvy song. <laughs> is that true? At that is 11 true, yeah, years that is old, true, yeah. you came up with the concept that it seemed yeah. to you that the people of England were more uh, obsessed, obsessed with, with something dumb like uh, this yes. woman's tits than, than something important going on. Yeah, because I think I, I was more, I was very socially motivated at that age. Do you remember how to play that song? No. Do you remember how to sing that song? It was very like... You know, just like that. Th that's the song? That's pretty good. <laughs> it's terrible. It sounds Come like on. a hit to me. <laughs> Give me the rights to that song. Okay. I what can are make the that words? He'll sing it. The words, uh, like, I remember it was like... Uh, something with tits, right? <laughs> <laughs> Definitely they popped up. Was the word tit in the song, the first I song? I think it was in the chorus about 18 times. Is that true? <laughs> no. So you, you, you kept it clean. You had I kept it clean. I had to, you know, the people where I was from, you couldn't swear or cuss. Is it hard for you to write lyrics to a song? Uh, it's hard to write good lyrics. The music comes easily to you? Everything comes easily, just not necessarily, not necessarily of a high quality. So it's have to filter out the good from the bad. In other words, you've got songs in your head all the time. Like yes. I've interviewed, like when I interviewed Joe Walsh, he used to say he constantly has like a radio station playing mm -hmm. in his head. He hear, you, that sounds familiar to yes. you. Yes. That sounds like something happening in your life. Yes, that's uh, true. You woke up this morning. Did you hear a song in your head? I did actually. What did you hear in your head? Can you can you play it for me? What what is oh, currently yeah, in I your head? I didn't get it out of my head. Yeah, on, into my fingers. Does it, uh, is that true? It takes a while to get it from the top to the tips. If you see what I mean. Hum, what's in your head right now? Like. <laughs> Is that really what's in your head? No, that just because that's a terrible now. song. I, I don't, I don't, I don't want to well, discuss it. I didn't want to. I didn't. If I had been your father, I would say, if that's in your head, you're going, you're going to go study. Back to uh, college. That's right. That's right. So yes, I think with songwriting, it's, it's kind of a tap that you have switched on all the time, and uh, you just keep receiving it as long as it gets sent to you, and uh, you just have to pick out the ones that are good. Have you ever had a situation where there's a song in your head and you say, "Oh my God, this is terrific." And then you don't have anything to record it with or put it down, and then it's lost. Do you, do, and you go, I know this was a great song if it only... Yeah. That's happened to you. Yeah. Is that torture in your life? No, because I feel like uh, it can't have been that great if I don't remember it. So you, you let go of it. You say, you know what, it, I, I, the great ones I'll remember. Yeah, so I think it was... I, I read a John Lennon interview one time when he was talking about that because they didn't have, like, iPhones and voice memos and all that stuff. No. So he said, to, if you have a really great song, you'll remember it and... So what's the process then? Like, let's say you're in the shower and you hear a great song in your head. Do you yes. run out of the shower? I and get the piano into the shower. You know, come on. What do you do? Where do you put uh, what it I down? Do is I, I, normally this happens at night time. Right. At like one in the morning is generally the kind of witching hour. And uh, everybody's asleep. And so I just go down and sit for maybe like three or four hours and just 
run around and around and around. So and it's like a job. You have to, like, you know at one in the morning, I'm going to go down for a couple hours and maybe yeah. write music. Yeah, but and this the, makes it hard for, to live with you, doesn't it? Right. It's, it's hard anyway. <laughs> but uh, Where do you write these songs down? On Gwyneth's body or something? Yeah, like, I mean, you've got, to do, you've got to do something. Her butt is covered with lyrics like this. How sensuous. <laughs> no, but you, 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 so you get this song in your head, yes. and you go downstairs, and you begin to what? Do you play it on the piano? Sometimes I don't get it in my head. Sometimes I just go and, like, like a fisherman, just sit there and, like, just fuck around for a Fuck around on the hours. piano. Yeah. And the piano is where you write. You never write can it on a guitar. Can you say that one here? No. Yes. Don't you get in big trouble. Oh, stop. <laughs> so you, only I can say fuck. <laughs> All right. And do not say shit. Okay. Anyway, so do you ever grab the guitar? It's always the piano that you sit down and you start yeah, to play. Uh, either one or the other. Right. And does the family get very upset with you because they're like trying to sleep and you're banging away on a no, piano? No, we have, and we have a studio right down the street, like to 10 meters away. So you have oh, a studio in your house? You, I no, mean, no, right not in the house, like uh, eight doors down the street. And that's your place. You yes, go there. Yes. And so would you say you're work obsessed that this goes on every night? I'd say, uh, yeah. I don't understand the financial arrangement between you and Coldplay. You write the songs. You I start the songs. You write all of the music, and yet... No, I start the songs. What does that mean? Well, it's like you on this show, right? You have Fred and Robin, and uh, I forgot your names. I'm sorry, but... Uh, everyone's forgotten his name. <laughs> when but he fucks up your piano, you're okay. going to forget his name, too. It's okay to right. forget Go his ahead. name. Yeah, right, yeah. But, uh, everyone forgets his name. <laughs> it's Scott. Think, Scott. Right. What, Scott, what separates uh, a solo artist from someone like me is that you know, they do everything from conception to birth, as it were, like every, right. every part of the arrangement. Whereas I, I might get a three chords and then have a, a song over it, but it hasn't yet been arranged and fleshed out and doesn't have a guitar riff. And we don't think anything's, I don't think anything's finished right until everybody's put their part on out of the four of us. So you've made, out of the four of you, you've made an arrangement with them when, yeah. uh, when it comes to splitting the publishing yeah. and the royalty and all that stuff. Yeah. You split it four ways evenly. We split it uh, 20, 20, 20, 40. 20, 20, yeah. 20, 40, you yeah. get the 40. Yeah. Oh, okay. No one, I never told anyone that, but you asked nicely. Yeah, but well, thank you. No, but seriously, that makes sense to me because I, I think you're being somewhat uh, uh, humble. No, it's not humble. It's, it's about. Uh, it's important to keep your chemistry and your band together. Because but I don't think your drummer is up at uh, one in the morning, sitting and writing uh, lyrics. No, and but he's songs. there at ten in the morning, ready to pound away on those. those yeah, skits. to hit it or to try it all day, same song. So you truly appreciate that. And if he fucks up the drum part, then the whole song's ruined. So, so we. We, uh, Why did you throw your drummer out of the band at one point? He was just too good looking. Smart. And I was threatened by that. Uh, part of your job is to be good looking. You, see, you actually work out. You, you recently lost a lot of weight. You have to be good looking. I didn't lose that much weight. No, but you, ha you now work out and take care of your body because yeah. part of the job of a lead singer, Mick Jagger would be the first to say you got to look pretty good. Well, it came from uh, seeing a lot of Bruce Springsteen shows uh, two years ago, and he was just in Buff. such great shape. I was like, man, he looks so much better than me, and he's well, old enough to be my grandfather. But that's pretty, it's, a, it's a pretty good idea. If you, you see, I get annoyed with people who think that they can be overweight right. and be rock stars. You can't. You can't. I mean, Why'd you get people, annoyed, though, Howard? Because they don't understand that it's show business, that, yes, a certain component is you have to look the part, and there's no shame in admitting that. So Ozzy looks apart? Yes, Ozzy always looked apart. Yeah, he looks apart. He looks he like looks he's apart like from he's humanity. Falling. But that's part of his but thing. That's part of the thing, yeah. That's, people it, would be disappointed if he didn't look like he was falling apart. Isn't a live show visual? Isn't it? Can it, I just go back to what you're saying about... Yes. I think that if you... I think the only thing an audience responds to is if they think you don't care. So if you start out big or you start out tall or you start out whatever, and that's your thing, then that's great, you know. So, but it, it's, look, it's, if you, it's if you let... It looked like you don't give a shit anymore, and you just spent the whole time partying and uh, right. eating and spending all your royalties. It's a fuck you to the audience. Yeah, but I don't agree that you have to be skinny. I just think you have to look like you care. Uh, how old were you when you started to perform in clubs? Uh, uh, in clubs, yeah, uh, you know, where you start 19. to get nineteen, where you'd go and, and, and they, I don't know, you'd make a couple of dollars, you'd, you'd actually sit down at a piano and play. Did you have? Did you start out as a solo artist, or was it always with the band? No, I was in some other bands in my high school. Was it always a band? Did you ever go up on stage by yourself? Yeah, a couple of times, but I, I don't like that. Why? You felt lost? Yes, right, like right now. Yeah. Do you feel lost? Do you feel vulnerable? Because I feel a bit vulnerable. I was really... Because but I said, like your show, so I, I, and no you. one else, and everyone else, it's that they said it was too early. Actually, everyone, <laughs> actually, they said, gee, would you want Chris in here by himself, or would you want him with the band? And I said, if you're giving me a preference, 
I'd rather talk to you one-on-one. Yeah. On one. And I like that vulnerability. Okay. I like that you feel somewhat naked out here. Yes. Uh, because I understand that. Some people need, you know, uh, Simon and Garfunkel, mm -hmm. the reason that band ever even happened, those two performed, Paul Simon was so dreadfully shy yeah. that he needed a guy up there with him. Right. It wasn't that Paul Simon couldn't have a solo career. Yeah. Do you fantasize now that you're more comfortable as a solo artist? Would no. You, you would never do it? No, sir. No leaving the band? No way. Wait, I, I, no. No solo thing. No way. Hasn't your wife said to you, listen, why are we splitting with these guys? You are capable of going out there on your own. Get your ass out on stage by yourself and let's get this thing really rolling. She says that most mornings. Yeah. <laughs> That's why you love her. That's why I love her. That's right. You know, you talk about marriage. I'm thinking about this, and you've got it. You're the one guy who can answer this for me. Really? Yes, you really are. The one. <laughs> because you're married to a famous woman. And I know a lot of your time is spent sort of acting like, hey, we're not married. Like, right. in what? other words, you don't walk a red carpet together, you, right. you know, this, this kind of thing. Now, I, listen, I'm married. I am so excited to walk anywhere with my wife. Right. I don't give a I don't care. I, I mean, I, I don't understand why certain people, like Beyonce and Jay-Z, act like they're not married. Right. Why can't you and your wife walk the red carpet together? I don't get it. Do you want the honest answer? Yeah. It's because it's, it's making something public that really wasn't designed to be, you know? It just it happens that those are our individual jobs. But isn't it fun to no, walk no, around with her? No, no, it's not fun. I mean, you've got this great-looking, exciting wife. Yeah, that's incredible, but we, you know, we get to do other things. But you'll walk <laughs> on a red carpet with your band, but not your wife. That's because we're, we're, our band is selling something. And well, a, red car a red carpet is about selling things. So this, in other words, this is the one thing you're going to keep private? Well, no, it's just we don't have anything to sell. We're not, we're not a product. That's just a relationship. It just happens that she does that and I do this. And when you went... Do you see what I mean? Yeah, I, I, I get it, but I, the joy I get from sort of hanging out with my wife even in a public situation i feel like you say with the band you feel protected i almost feel protected when I, I have my wife with me like i have my best friend and in some of those public situations i feel so much more comforted right uh by having her there alongside with me that that outweighs any kind of uh you know privacy issue okay well we we i i get it i get that feeling uh in other ways i don't, I don't know yeah, no, you're obviously... I've got no good answer for you. You're obviously sorry. way more secure than I am. No, I don't think it's that. I think it's uh, just, yeah, it's a different thing I can't really explain. But maybe it's a star thing. Like, it's the thing to say, hey, listen, we uh, we don't allow the media to have pictures of... No, Did they you're, call you're, a conference and no. all the stars Well, decided? a lot of stars do this. <laughs> that, that's what they happen Chris is not, by the way, he is not the only Springs. one doing this. It seems like everyone's doing it. Because that's what I'm it. saying. Did they have a meeting in Hollywood and well, everybody... But, but, but Bruce did. Springsteen walks around with his with wife. Patty, yeah. Yeah, he'll walk around with Patty. But that's she's also been, in the band. She is in the band. You're right, Robin. Yeah. That's a good point. Get your facts straight. Yeah, you know what? <laughs> Let Robin and I debate this. You don't even need to be here. Also, it's that it's just what it's just what makes you feel comfortable, right? I mean, you're you're saying I'm famous, but you're ten times more famous. So you am I? Yeah. I'm ten times more famous than you. Yeah. You've sold uh, tons of out. Everyone knows Coldplay knows your music. No, nah, man. That's yeah. But uh, this is not. Let's not make this a competition. <laughs> but, <laughs> but I'm just saying, it's just what makes you feel comfortable, and we and we don't really feel comfortable in that situation. Really? Yeah. I think you should try it. I think you'd be very yeah. comfortable. Two of you are charming. Well, Why not? You're being very sweet, Howard. Thank uh, you. Okay, so let's go back to this, because I want to understand the trajectory <clears> of your <throat> career. So you start to perform at 11. You start to write songs. Uh, first big hit song with Coldplay is Yellow. Yes, sir. How old are you when you write that? Um, 21 or 22. 22 years old. When you wrote Yellow. 22 or 3. I can't, I can't actually remember. When you wrote Yellow, did you know it was a hit? The, yes. You did? Yes. How do you know? You just so... You just, just had a feeling. I was like, fuck. This is good. Well, it's just, I, I think with any of our songs that have gone on to do okay, I don't really know how they came through. They just sort of, it's the old cliche that everyone says, Paul Simon, all of the people, all of the songwriters say it, it's like the good ones just kind of come through you. When you make an album, do you know that some songs sort of aren't commercially viable? You put them on there because you love them, but, but you, yeah. can, you can tell which ones are going to be. Well, you know be. which ones aren't singles. Right. But then, and, and maybe now that's a more of a concern because nobody really buys albums anymore. But still, if you still we are in the business of making albums, so we we need the sort of scope of that. But you know, this song will never be like a hugely popular song, but it just fits in the whole tapestry. You know what I'm saying? Do you hate what what's happened to the music industry? No, I think 
No, man. hate is very strong. Well, hate, hate meaning, wow, it's not much of a business in terms of selling records anymore. You can go out and tour. You guys got that kind of following. But we didn't get into it for that. I think if you if you go back to Shakespeare's time or something, musicians and artists were, were just working for patrons, and maybe we're just going back that way. You feel okay that uh, in the old days, if you wrote a song and that was a hit, that you could sell millions and millions of records. Now everyone just bootlegs them and gets them for free. Yeah, well, I can't do anything about it. I'm, I, I just love... I love what I do, and if that's what happened, that's what happened. And really, you've got that kind of relaxed attitude. Uh, yeah, pretty much. I think if <laughs> well, people. Well, they've done pretty well. I mean, yeah. you guys have sold over four like said, million we... albums, right? Over what now? Over four million. Four million. They've sold over. over well, I'll give you, I'll give... We sold over three hundred. Stop it! No. How many have I'll they sold? You, I'll tell you. I'll tell you the exact number you sold. No, let's not do this. This is nerdy. <laughs> it's not Who nerdy. gives a shit? You know what? I give a shit. <laughs> I'll throw you right out of here if it's uh, three million. What? It's over fifty million. Yeah, over fifty, 50? million. I tried. What was I off? We're so three We're million. Off <laughs> three million. He, you know what? He'd be sitting at home with his parents and tell him to go back to college. <laughs> three million. Uh, so, well, okay. So, if, I think if people started to come into our shows, and if, if everybody wasn't paid at all, it would be a problem. But how long did it take you to write a song like Yellow? Uh, Ten minutes. Seriously? Yeah. That, I mean, in other words, you heard it in your head. Did I you didn't hear it. My dad just came out, came through. I'll tell you exactly how it happened. We were in Wales, and um, my g microphone was broken or something. I was waiting to record something else, and I was thinking about Neil Young, and I was starting to do a Neil Young impression just to try and make everyone giggle. I love Neil Young. <laughs> so I was, like, doing this, and I was, like, and it was very starry outside. I was, like, look at the stars. Like trying to do, I can't do Neil Young for shit, but that's how it came out, was trying to do that. And you I never told anybody that. You started to do it. You started to do your Neil Young impression. Yeah, I was like, oh, this is pretty good. And then <laughs> Yellow came out. Yeah. With the lyrics? Yeah. Could you play a little of that, the way you did at that time, uh -huh. that, you, that it first came out of you? Yeah, I have to switch to a guitar. Is that cool? I, I, hey, if you're willing to do I'll it, go it. I'll, I'll go and do it. Switch to anything you want. I'm happy with that. I didn't know you played guitar, too. It's pretty good. Well, he says he rides on both. I love it. I wish I could play anything. Well, you just got to start, man. How old are you? Do your kids, do your kids play uh, any instruments? Uh, yeah, a little bit. Wouldn't you tell them never to play the clarinet or violin, that the guitar and piano are the cool instruments to play? I said... I haven't said anything like that. I would say that to them. You would never you say want. that to what? anyone. Intra I certainly would. I no, told my I'm tell your to kids. Chris. I know Why what wouldn't you Chris would say. say that? Chris, <laughs> you will never play the fucking trombone. But, well, I mean, uh, my parents got me a clarinet. I wanted to hang myself. Look at this face with a clarinet. I was never getting laid. That was a face built for a clarinet. The, the guitar and the piano, we can make a living at. Yes. 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 Of course. All right. So, you, so do you still play clarinet? I'm making a living at no. violin. I don't play clarinet. I play a little guitar and a little piano, but you know, badly. Go ahead. So, so you're sitting in the studio. You really want me to tell you this? This you're, is not boring to you? What? D no, this okay. is great. Go ahead. So I'm just waiting, like, sound checking like this. We had another song called Shiver, which is on our first record, which is... Right. Uh, okay. And uh, I was waiting to do that. And then I was found this chord, because I like to use strange tunings on the piano, on the guitar. Yes. So I was, that chord made... I liked it. And then that chord... So I was like... Look at the stars. Right. Real Neil Youngy. And then the rest just come out. Come on, play a little. Oh, okay. You're so I damn see. talented. What are you doing? You went and got the guitar. Okay. Uh, don't fuck around. <clears throat> Let's do it. In my voice or in my bad Neil Young voice? Do it in your voice. Okay. Yeah. That's even worse. But, but those there. chords came to you, and then all of a sudden you said, hey, these are pretty good chords. I'm not screwing around here. This might be a song. Yeah, so this is what happened. So I did this bit. I'll show you the bit I did. Yeah. I went in, and I ran into uh, where Johnny and Guy were, who are bass player and guitarist. And said, "What do you think of this?" And they were playing com video games, and they were like, "Eh, that's okay." Yeah, good. They're, they're worth tw twenty percent. Yeah, <laughs> go ahead. Yeah. No, but uh, no, but I haven't finished the whole thing. So I was like, right. "Look at the stars. Look how they shine for you. You and all the things you do. Yeah, they were all yellow." I didn't know what that meant. Oh, that's so good. Don't stop. Go ahead. I didn't know you what didn't that know, meant. What do you mean like, you didn't know what it meant? I was like, because I, I, the word yellow came out, and I was like, no one's going to know what that means. But you're saying well, the stars are yellow and blue. 
Well, well, I didn't mention the blue, but I but, can if you want. Yes, and, and I but, but I mean, you're like, the stars are all yellow. Yeah, and but they're not yellow, though. That's the problem. The stars are yellow. Well, they are in sort of Christmas cards. So you were confused by your own lyric. This was coming out of you, and you didn't even know <laughs> what it meant. Like, you, there's no meaning to it. I was like, I'm going to have to talk about this in 12 years on how it's done. I better figure this shit out. But you're telling me there was no meaning to this thing? Well, just, it was a feeling more than a meaning. Right, yeah, yeah. Because but, it makes me emotional when you start singing on you. No. Oh. But you must feel bad some nights in the hotel when you're traveling and you're with the band and you're traveling the world. Mm -hmm. Do you ever sit and go, fuck, what am I doing? I miss my kids. Yeah, I, I think everybody does. So this is tough. It's not tough. It's not like being in the army or working in a mine. Right. And we're lucky we fly home and we, it's fine. We're fine. I don't know, man. Don't worry. Do you get, do you get, do you, I worry about you. I do. <laughs> Thanks, do you, ever, do, you, do you ever get I bummed out with sometimes. tabloid reports where they'll say, right, Chris's marriage is over. That's it. It's done. Do you, do you get irked by that? Do you read no, that shit? No. You don't? No. You know what you have and that's it? Yes, sir. You don't try to go out and deny it. Do you ever go up to the no. band and say, listen, guys, stop playing Pac-Man for a second. We've got to have a press conference. We've got to have a press conference. <laughs> <laughs> you don't do that. Stop playing Pac-Man. I like that. Uh, the new album is called... Now, by it's, the way, you say this album title has no meaning whatsoever. No, I didn't say that. I just... It depends who asks me. Some people ask me in a kind of aggressive manner. They're angry. So I just like, fuck you, why would I tell you? <laughs> but it does have a meaning now. Well, if you ask me nicely, I'll tell you. I'll ask you nicely. <laughs> Please tell me what this means. Okay, so, so we took a lot of inspiration from people who paint street art and graffiti and stuff. Banksy and such? Uh, everybody, but going back to Tacky183 and all the New York guys and girls. And uh, we thought, let's, we need to come up with a, a, like a tag name. Right. And that's where it came from. Milo Xyloto. And the reason we came up with the word Xylo is because of Xylophone. And it was about thinking of a, creating a character for us as a band that was a musical person. In other words, if you were a street artist, yeah. your name, because you need to... Milo Xyloto, yeah. That would be, and you would be a, an outlaw in a sense, because street artists are outlaws. And you're enamored with that. Yeah. Because all over your piano, there is street art, right? Yeah. Yeah, but you don't see them as breaking the law. You don't see them as defacing a public Not the good property. ones, no. Th yeah, right, but there's a lot there's of bad a, ones. Well, but it's like music or art or radio. Is, there's good ones and bad ones and people who are great and people who are shit. Yeah, That's but, right. you know, um, people have to start somewhere. You start off bad, right? Yeah. You take down a subway or two with it. <laughs> That's it. But there's a difference between, you know, putting a mustache on the Mona Lisa and then doing a beautiful piece on a Absolutely. gray wall. Uh, Marianne from Brooklyn, you're on the air, you're on with the, uh... Oh my god, Howard, you made my freaking day, Chris. Hi, I'm Marianne. I'm totally in love with you. Oh, thanks for that. What would you do to Chris if you could sexually, if he had divorced his <laughs> wife and now suddenly you were divorced from your husband? What would you do to Chris sexually? You Describe it to him so he can get turned on. He's been married a while. Chris, I, my son played La Vida at his wedding and I danced just the way you do in the video, man. <laughs> does that turn you on when you hear... Shut up, Marion. Thanks, uh, Marion. Thank, <laughs> thanks, Marion. What, what does, she sounds like a crow. Um, does that turn you on when someone says, hey, man, we... we Why'd have, you cut her off, man? But, 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 you hear that voice? <laughs> we can only That's take so, so much. Could, well, I, I, I appreciate it. Listen, you know what? I can't take it when they're screaming about you. They should only scream about me. That's true. That's right. right. You know my ego. It's male rage. That's right. Male rage. But seriously, what Marianne says, her son, had it. you know, he, he played this at his wedding. Is that the ultimate compliment? Yes. Yes. And when <clears> you hear it in an elevator or something, like you go, wow, I'm really mainstream here. Uh, yeah. yeah. The, yeah. the honest answer is most, most of the day I don't really feel the, any resonant. I don't feel how our music has any impact on anybody because most of the day we're in a bus or moving or, or whatever we're doing we're not with uh, any people that's that's why playing live is so important because it's the only time you get feedback you get any feedback or when someone says something like that you're like oh that's great so that's really I thought great. everybody fucking hated us <laughs> yeah right you can feel like i'm not joking sometimes. i'm not joking you feel like people hate you sometimes yeah because you get ridiculed what is what is what is the criticism of you that you that I what think this is our music's bad that your music's bad. <laughs> All right, simple, that's pretty so. heavy, yeah. And if you say your music's bad, you're saying you're bad in a, in a sense. Yeah, you right? can't really come back to that. And when right. you're in a room and you're creating music and yeah. you haven't let anybody hear it yet, what yeah. is it, Gary? you must have the fear that... Uh, is this going to be the one that doesn't work? Yeah. Go ahead. I saw a piece uh, on CBS Sunday Morning. They were interviewing him, and they said that, I guess it was a New York Times piece in, like, two, 2003, 
and they call them the most insufferable band of, oh the, of like the millennium. Did you read that? Or, I did, yeah. or is Gary breaking the news to you? No, no, no. no. he read it. Yeah. Thank he read. you for bringing I read it, that yeah. in. That's the last thing I read, actually. And that's so. 2005. Oh. You, and you stopped reading reviews. I stopped reading them from start to finish. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's almost, isn't it almost impossible to ignore them? I mean, you get, because you, you get sucked in. People will tell you anyway, won't they? Eddie Murphy well, said he doesn't read them because he said if you believe the good ones, then you have to believe the bad yeah. ones. Yeah, well, exactly. As long as you, as long as there's a variety, then you, then they're okay. So, th so give me the definitive answer. Do you avoid all criticism? Do you avoid all newspaper reviews of Coldplay, or do you just? Yeah, um, I do, but I always can feel what they are. So I can, I, I, I might accidentally see a headline or. Are you tortured? Am I tortured? Yeah, are you a tortured man in the sense that uh, <coughs> you, you, you value too much what other people think and you can't hold on to yourself? No, like I said, I, I care most of all about the people that like it. Do you go to a psychiatrist at all? Uh, occasionally. And uh, does that help? How does that work, occasionally? I, I don't know how guys go occasionally and think they're in <laughs> therapy. But, uh, they, uh, you, well, me, that's you the English go, way. you got to go three or four days a week. <laughs> does your therapist say to you, listen, Chris, if we're going to get anywhere, yeah. you got to start coming in here on a consistent basis? No, he doesn't do that. He doesn't. What is his name? Because I'd like to see him. <laughs> you need that guy. <laughs> My guy won't let me do anything but sit there every day with him. So, do you seriously go every day? Uh, I used to go four days a week. Now he let me. I, I said, "Look, I got to go three days a week. I'm a busy man." <laughs> wow. So now it's three days. A you week. don't think there was any kind of like business thing happening there? No, day? no. I don't think he needs me as a patient. No, <laughs> I, don't, I don't have that feeling. The guy's pretty successful. Do you go, Robin? Uh, no, she I should. let him go and do all of the therapy. I do all of her work <laughs> for her. And you guys have been working together thirty years. Is that right? Thirty years. Something like that. Yeah. yeah. That's incredible. Yeah. Well, listen. She keeps me going. <laughs> if I don't have her, I'm in big trouble. Yeah. I mean, criticism is a bitch. You know. I but, talk but, but, too much on it because right. because it's just a little tiny part. It's like a little Achilles heel on an otherwise very wonderful. Well, I mean, if you saw like jo Johnny Rotten says some shit about Coldplay, if you saw him, would you punch him out or you just no, say, I don't oh, fuck care, man. I don't get, fine. I, fuck you, right? That's the end of that. Uh, okay, so the new album does have meaning in the title, yeah. And the new single is, I guess you call it a single, right? Yeah. It's called uh, Paradise. Yes, sir. This is about your wife, of course. <laughs> <laughs> Talk about the first time you had sex with your wife, and then okay. uh, describe it in every detail. Yes. That's right. Paradise would be that, wouldn't it? Well, I didn't think she liked anal, and... <laughs> <laughs> but she does. You're here to say that your wife, who we don't even know who she is... Well, I've got one her. thing to say on this show. <laughs> right. She loves anal. <laughs> well, that's, that's a bit of a scoop, isn't it? <laughs> Will you ever write a song about that? I was like, I need to go on how it's done and set the record straight. <laughs> Why don't you? Why don't you just do a whole, uh, you know, let's go public about everything. Uh, would you perform your new single for us? Okay. All right. Here we go. <coughs> you want to say anything about this song that came to you in 10 minutes? Yeah. Let's hope it did. because this It actually <laughs> did. Yeah. Someone gave me a phone call and said, do you want to write a song for the winner of this TV show? And I said, yeah. What do you mean? I can't be more specific. What does that mean? <laughs> they said... Cause someone was oh, is this a, one of those shows and somebody needs a song to sing? Like well, so American they said, Idol? Someone said, would you be interested in writing a song for someone who wins a talent show? Yeah. And I said, sure. And then, then, then this came out, like, real quick. Uh, but then when, when I finished it, I was like, oh, I, I like that too you much. You can't give it away. <laughs> so this, okay, wait, because I'm a little thick. You're this, not thick at all. I play the oh, board, absolutely <laughs> thick. I don't understand. This, I'm guessing American Idol, one of these type of shows, right. came to you and said, look, at the end, whoever wins has to have an original song. Right. Would you, be, would you honor us by writing this song? You wrote it for them, and you had this in mind for them, and then you said, this is so good. I didn't say it was so. I didn't do. I didn't like. Do Screw that. them! I'm not giving it to them. <laughs> no, I just thought when it when it was done, I just thought, oh, uh, we'll keep that. We're gonna keep this song. Yeah. All right. And this uh, is about paradise. What is this paradise? This is, a, uh, this is about people when you're going through something, s struggles or whatever, and and you can, it's, you know, in the Shawshank Redemption where Tim Robbins is in solitary, and he dreams about Mozart, and he says it's cool because I have all the music in my head. Right. It came from that idea. So what's in your head? That's paradise. In other words, they can't take that from you. Just all the things you can hold on to. Yeah. Sounds like it's about your wife. Yeah. Something weird just happened in my ear. What happened? I, can't, I don't know. Oh, my God. All right. Do uh, you want me to play it? Sure. I'll just play like a little bit. Come on. Give us, a, give us a little of paradise. Um. Paradise. 
paradise, para, para, paradise, para, para, paradise. Every time she closed her eyes. Very nice. Beautiful. <laughs> sorry, I'm sorry. Ten minute job, Stop huh? It, yeah. What happened there? You got something caught in your throat? Yeah, I'm sorry. You got emotional, didn't you? <laughs> Good for you. I think get emotional. Just... Tell me what that's like. That's why I'm in therapy. I have no idea. Listen, the new album. How do you say this? Milo Xyloto. Milo Xyloto, yeah. Milo Xyloto. That's yeah. a tongue twister. Who are you hanging out with these days? Sting and those guys? I don't know where you got that from. Who are your buddies? Get out of here. My buddies are the same. Who's your best friend? My best friend, well, I guess it's a cliche, but there's people in the band. Oh, not your uh, wife. Interesting. You don't hang out with any famous <laughs> what say, people. What do you say? Not my wife. <laughs> not your Fuck wife. You, man. Hey, that's pretty cool. Okay. That's You've never honest. hung out with Madonna. She and Gwyneth are friends. Oh, that's right. I, got, I haven't really hung out with Madonna, now. you got some heavy friends. What do you want to know about famous friends? Is that what you're trying to ask? Yeah, you know what I'm going to do? You're going to invite me to one of these parties you dudes throw. What the and, fuck uh, are you talking about? I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. There's a whole little group of you. I wish I was you, me. You, you, really you Beyonce, Madonna. and Jay-Z. Listen, well, no, that, no, listen. No, that, Jay, that, that is my friend. Jay-Z? Yeah, okay, all right. Yeah. Jay-Z's Finally, your friend? That is my friend. So why the fuck don't you invite me to some little party when you have a little, thing, know you a little get together with them? I didn't them. know you were... I could hang with Gwyneth. Listen, let me tell you something. They put me in a room at a party with uh, Barbara Streisand. We entered it up for like tw two hours. You did straight. what, Britt? Well, no. We talked it up for two hours. You entered it up. You entered it up. You don't oh, you know entered. Italian? <laughs> All right, so listen. <laughs> what are you saying? Gwyneth won't let you meet Madonna? I mean, what is it? Is she keeping her under wraps? What, what is she embarrassed? Wait, wait. No, I, you I'm hang so out. lost. There's about eight questions. <laughs> you have a lot of high-level type friends, right? You know, I have a lot show, of showbiz. All kinds of friends, but you don't want to know about the low-level type. No, no, no. I'm not interested in them. I got enough of those. Okay. <laughs> All right. I want to get to one of these parties you have. Well, okay. When do we have them? Well, well, you tell me. I'm not privy to all this. Every you, Wednesday at 4. It's all right. So invite me to one of them. I'll, okay. I'll behave. I know how to do it. You <laughs> know we, what I mean? I know how to play like I don't give a shit that Gwen is sitting over there. Don't worry. I know how to play her game, your game, everyone's game. All right. Play I'm the a game. smart guy. Play I know the how game. to play the game. <laughs> Write a song about how to play the game. Okay. Go ahead. Play the game. That's good. When you're with famous people, act the same. Right. Don't let them know that you think they're special. Like that. That's very good. I like that. Right. Keep going. Play <laughs> the game. Play some more of that. Um, no. Uh, listen, you're a delightful guy. You're a talented guy. I'm being nice to you, though. Uh, are you a prick sometimes? Can yes, you be mean? very much so. Are you a, a mean to the band? Most afternoons. Uh, no, n not mean, but they can get frustrated. I think most singers drive bands a bit crazy. Actually, I hear good things about you. Like, like you donate 10% of your income to charity. Is that true? Yeah, that's true, yeah. Yeah, that's nice. What are the charities you believe? But we don't donate the other 90, so it's, that's true. It's, it's how you want to look at it. Do you ever beat your band? Do you ever hit them? <laughs> beat in what sense? <laughs> like, like with your fists, uh, you punch them or, or hit them? We, no, we... No. Are you paranoid about your hands because you play guitar and you play piano? Are you worried about them a lot? Do you... That's funny you say that. I, uh, I felt like when they're supposed to be taken, they will be. What do you mean? I mean, as in, I, I thought I should... Do I worry about my fingers or do I just feel like when one goes, it goes? Did there become a time where you said to yourself consciously that, like, oh, man, I'm worrying about my hands too much. I constantly am worried about them. And, and, and no, then you I... came up with that philosophy, if they go, they go? I mean, I, I have a little OCD. I know you do too, right? Yeah. So I saw you rubbing some lotion on your hands. Was that because no, you that were was, afraid? I was going to put that in my throat, but then I thought you would ask about it. I see. So, so, you, so, avoid, so you rethought it. But then that's I'm why watching I everything sing the last you, song. I'm watching everything you're doing. I know. That's right. I <laughs> see what's happening. Like an eagle. You suffer from OCD? Uh, yes. You're worried about germs? No, not so much germs, just kind of Getting num sick. numbers and stuff like that. You have rituals uh, and numbers. Yeah, but I try, I've, I've got better with it. Yeah. Yeah. And, and so, uh, but a lot of that has to do with fears. About, right. about illness and things like that. Are you protective of your throat? Are Thanks, you constantly doctor. worried about being sick because you have to sing at night? I mean, it's got to No be... more than anybody else. Really? You have well, a healthy No attitude. one wants to go on stage in 
Pittsburgh and not be able to sit. Do you know what I mean? You, That's right. You need you need your voice, but nobody right. wants to go on stage in Pittsburgh. No. Period. <laughs> <Come on. laughs> I Where's do. your favorite place to perform? Uh, I, I like anywhere there's people. You don't care. Now, if someone wants to be there, I'm happy to play. <clears throat> now, when you decided, have you to been down to Occupy Wall Street? Yeah. Oh, you have. Yeah, Rob. Yeah. Maybe you and I should go there. Seems I like think that's we, a good, it's part, time for us to go. I'm, I'm pretty sure we get invited over to Chris's house if we hit, <laughs> if we hit the Occupy Wall well, Street. But I'll tell you the truth. I, w I went like two weeks ago, and I was I was in shorts because I was on a run. Uh huh. Right. And I was like, I don't know if. They want people like me here, especially wearing shorts. So I didn't stay in it very long. <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> what I just felt like I didn't know if I would be perceived as like a, a rich person who shouldn't be there. Right. Right. And, and then I got confused. So I, I, I had a sort of debate with myself and left. Did people recognize you when you went no. down there? Or they did? <laughs> no. so nobody cared you were there. It was, it was a completely <laughs> hypothetical <laughs> argument. Yeah. You're having an argument and no one even cared. I was like, well, yeah. listen, what do you, what, what, well, who knows? I have my hood on, so. What is that shit you just put on the back of your throat? I saw you do it. What is, what is that? It's just the strange oil stuff. Why? Because it's going to keep you from what? Getting sick or do you have a sore throat? It stops me from saying anything stupid. <laughs> you, you take your finger and you jam it down your throat and you touch the back of your throat. Yeah, put, put some oil on like a car I see. engine. It greases you up. Yeah. All right. I, Otherwise, I, I can't get those high notes like you just heard. Listen, man, we're having fun here, right? Me, yeah, yeah, I hope so. <laughs> Remember that I'm fun. Uh, oh, All right. Okay, just, just keep that in the back of your mind. And, and by, before you leave, report how many women you've been with at once as a rock oh. star. How many times, uh, in other words, have you been in a group orgy? Did you ever get to experience that before you met your lovely wife? <laughs> or do you orgy with go, your wife? You Did leave, you right? and the band have the bus and, you know, do all that stuff? No, we don't, we've been real lucky. With, we didn't spend much time on a bus. Is that right? Yeah. yeah. Look at us, we're getting blue jobs for you. <laughs> <laughs> you know, whatever the accent. That's an amazing impression. Thank you. <laughs> Listen, Which of the guys do that is that? Again? <laughs> hey, Governor, we're going to get a blowjob tonight. <laughs> I can be in the band. Listen to me. You're a good man. I'm listening. And you're writing great music. Thank you so much. Fuck the critics. I don't know who these critics are. Yeah, I'm not either. saying... I, I, we, just are, we just talked to them about it for a minute. That's right. I want you to be clear that I, most of it is all good. You're doing great. Yeah. For not having any piano lessons, barely. You're doing fantastic. Thank you very much. I'm proud of you. <laughs> Maybe um, he should take some piano lessons now. Could you imagine if he took piano lessons how good he'd be? They funny, I asked. Uh, we did a Steve Jobs when, when he died. Uh -huh. we, we, we went and played at um, the Apple headquarters, and right. Nora, Nora Jones was playing, and I asked her to show me some new chords because she has incredible piano skills. What did she show right? you? Let me, let she me didn't see show what you, me yet. She hasn't shown she's you. Gonna she's going to show you. come she over and teach you? you. She said they were a closely guarded secret. <laughs> <laughs> so she's not going to teach you? I don't know. She didn't tell me her rates. Were you friends with Steve Jobs? <clears throat> uh, we met him a few times and he was, he was cool to us. Yeah. Yeah. What a genius, huh? Yeah. You got an iPod? I've got, yeah. Do you have a, an iPhone? Yep. You got a Mac computer? Yep. Is there anything you have that isn't Mac? <laughs> no. uh, me too. I love it. Okay. I love that guy. I right. think he's fantastic. What did you do? You played his funeral? His memorial. His memorial. But you know what was interesting? I would have been uh, great at that. I would <laughs> love to play a memorial. What are you going to play? I, 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 would, I would get him to say a few words. <laughs> before, before, we, before we really knew who he was, we, we, he, he came to see us play. And he was in the dressing room. And then Dave, our manager, explained, you know, this is Steve. And we are like, oh, oh, okay. We put two and two together. And uh, so we asked him to tell us how he built his first computer. And that was really interesting. Oh, amazing, right? Cause, Cause he he, he actually knows how to take the bits and make right, something the from real nothing. Yeah. Pieces, yeah. Him and that Wozniak character yeah. did, did it in their parents' garage or something. It's, yeah, that's what he said. And it was amazing. It's very rock starish, isn't it? <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, very, very cool. Sorry to see him gone, man. Imagine what was in his head. I know. I hope he wrote a few things down before. I think he, went. he wrote a lot down. Is that what he told you? No, but that's what I heard. What did you play at his. Uh, uh, what did we play? Yeah. When you Some of these same ones. Yeah. And the song called Every Teardrop is a Waterfall. Did you get the whole place crying? I don't know. I don't think so. That's fabulous. Was that your goal, or were you trying for something else? I never made I know, anyone it's a, it's cry. It's a strange thing to, to play. You know, one of your guys asked if we played weddings. Was that Jason, someone you were talking to? Uh -huh. Yeah. But, but we never played a memorial before, and it was, it was strange to like, think what, what's appropriate, what's not yeah. appropriate. But, it, but it, was, it, was, it was cool to do. Yeah, I know. It's kind of a weird thing. Yeah. You wouldn't play. If somebody offered you a couple of million to play a wedding, would you do it? Uh, we'd consider it now. Like yeah. Gaddafi? Yeah. Or <laughs> would you do a bar mitzvah? <laughs> yeah, would you, yeah, would you play Gaddafi's uh, wedding? Like I said, I, I think the way the, way the music industry is going is that you, you're, we're working musicians, so 
someone wants us to play somewhere, then we'll, we'll consider it. Right. You're, you're not, you're, you say, hey, you got you a bar mitzvah, you got the money. We're for hire, man. How much, how much would it cost me to have Coldplay play a bar mitzvah? Like Seriously. A million dollars? A million bucks you were there. Yeah. I went over someone's house. They had Elton John playing in the living room. Right. And I think it was about a million or two or something like that. Yeah. yeah. I told you, one of my friends was, you know, on some big yacht, and there was this whole bandstand next door at another yacht. Yes. And he said, well, what was that? And they said Beyonce was there last night. She just played the right. uh, concert on a yacht, yeah. somebody's personal yacht. Yeah, I tell well, you. What's, what's funny, though, is when you get a big thing, like when people talk about big money like that, it, it sounds a lot more than it eventually ends up. You know what I'm saying? Because you have to split it with the band, and you get a manager, and, and you, you do it. You know, you pay tax, and you have all costs and so. Yeah. yeah. But, but it's still amazing. Don't get me wrong. I mean, can you imagine a million dollars just for showing it's up at some crazy. guy? And you do a full concert and all that kind of thing. Yeah. But, I, but I, don't, I, I don't think it's what we choose to do, first and foremost. This is if we get desperate, basically. <laughs> right. You would do it, though, right? Uh, That's yeah. it. Okay. <laughs> In other words, wasn't there a point where rock stars would say, no fucking way I'm ever playing a I don't think there was ever a point. No. No, oh, I, know, I know some rock stars who won't do it. But those, those, really? are the, those are the people that are like billionaires. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, exa exactly. <laughs> You're right. Uh, did Gwyneth go with you to the uh, Apple thing, to the J Steve Jobs thing? No, sir. She should have gone. By the way, we've never talked about the names. Oh, what? Oh, the Apple? baby names. My cat's name is Apple, by the way. Okay, there we go. Because she showed up on my doorstep in an Apple box. Nothing to do with your kid. Okay. What about the names? Well, you know, we have made a big deal about is there a Hollywood thing? There is. Where you have to give your kids special names. They yes. can't have normal names. What do you mean a Hollywood thing? It what, is a, what do you I'll tell you. I'll expect my theory Robin is touting. <laughs> I, that, okay. I can't I will, believe I'll, you haven't brought I'll it up. I'll cop to it. The, listen, okay. I've said this often, that the, the famous people... Yeah. But why are you not including yourself in this? This is what I don't understand. Because I am so evolved. <laughs> you're looking at a fully realized man. You're, you're pretending like you're some Joe Schmo. No, I, name, I purposely name my kids regular names. What are they called? Deborah, what? Emily, Ashley, this kind of thing. Right, but know, at one point in names. history, someone wasn't called Deborah. That's true. Right? Listen. It's just a name. Uh, one of my kids is named Xylophone, but that's right. <laughs> We don't talk about that one. I feel that because <laughs> these artists, like yourself, are special, they are. They're a special person. That's not true. Uh, no. Gwyneth is a special person. That, in a sense, the kids have to be special, too. They don't want just normal-type kids. They right. want special kids. And, and these names have to be special. Uh, bon Jovi is in here. You know his kid name is Telefunken U47? <laughs> now, that's just what I'm talking about. Every Are you joking? No, I'm being serious. No, not about the name of Bon Jovi. <laughs> I'm saying, no, his kids' names are like Romeo and things like that. Right. They're, it, they're, they, want like them to be, they want them to be rock and roll special, too. They do. Right. That's it. Do you agree with this? Well, first of all, I take issue with your thing about people being special and stuff. It's just, that's just not You're true. You're embarrassed to admit it. You feel oh, no, special. No, no, I'm not embarrassed to admit You're, it. Because, you are special. No, no only in, in a certain field. Yes. But what about the special dentists and the special... Given, but a special dentist isn't recognized the same way a special musician is. Right, you guys, should be. You guys, I'd rather have a great dentist. Than I a agree. Great the guy who record. invented the cure for you know for this or that. You, some some of these guys, right. scientists, you don't even know. They're fabulous people. But I do agree with that. People who are in the arts, that's their job to come up with new names for shit and stuff like that. Yes, they're trendsetters. But I don't, but I don't, yeah, but that's I don't think to do with being special. I think it's just we we all come, we come up with song name, names and album names and. And so I when am you're naming a baby, that. you're still thinking. Yeah, so, what's so a if you new... think, well, I could call it Rupert, but right. everyone else has done that. <laughs> so you could call your album. Rupert. You're an original. You like to come up with original. You're an artist. You create new art. Well, you try. Yes, absolutely. All right, the last word. And, well, we didn't come you... up with. My son's called Moses. So I didn't think of that. Not, not really original <laughs> <That's true>. there. <laughs> I like that name. That's a good name. I like the name Apple. I love the name Apple. <laughs> I like it. And I'm going to go to one of these parties. I'll meet Apple. What and believe me, I like name? What middle name do you put with Apple? Apple Schmapple. <laughs> <laughs> no, really. What is Apple's middle name? Schmapple. Is it? Really? Yeah. It's a good name. Good it's actually name. Schnapple. We got a, a, an advertising deal. <laughs> Apple Schnapple. Smart. Just got an endorsement. Do you do any of that? Do you have endorsement? Do you, you, you ever no. get music on commercials or anything? Will you ever do no, that? No, we once did an iTunes commercial, but we don't tend to do them. But uh, for, And that's a, a, a decision that... Uh, yeah, that's, I like, a, like we're talking about the thing about playing weddings. It's like... You got to do it when needs must, but we've been lucky. We haven't needed to do that. Everybody has a line that they draw. In other words, some people are not comfortable making their music that commercial. But couldn't you make an argument that now that radio is so fragmented and all that, putting your music on commercials might be a good way to reach people? You could, you, you could make the argument. Are you making it? I'm asking. Uh, maybe you could. Let's argue. I don't think you choose to do that first and foremost. That's the 
primary way. It's is not that a group keep... decision or is that? Yeah, that's, that's a drummer a group... decision actually. It's really? Yeah, Our you... drummer makes those decisions. Oh please! Well, uh, I don't believe that for a minute. I swear on my life. I think you're making a joke. <laughs> no drummers it. make the decisions. <laughs> I promise on my yeah, life. The last drummer that made a decision was Dave Clark Five, and that was it. <laughs> and everyone knows it. That's rock and roll history. <laughs> and you better cop to that. <laughs> Karen Carpenter didn't even make. Jim, what's the last word for Chris? Now, Chris, would you uh, would you let Howard's beautiful wife Beth or any other woman go go down on Gwyneth? Oh my God! That's an out. Let me let me speak for you. That's of course. An, that's a, oh, you would. Okay, all right. I thought it was inappropriate, but not. You would allow it. That's her decision. Oh, that's fabulous. We have to get those two kids together. <laughs> Come on. Hope Gwyneth's in the mood. Yeah, let's have a real party. Forget your fancy friends. All right, listen. What do you think that guy is doing today? Uh, he's probably beating off right now. <laughs> Thinking about that. Uh, go, all right, Rich, let's get a more appropriate last uh, no, thought. That's okay. Oh, I don't know. That's Rich, go ahead. Yes, I just have to say that I love Chris's music. It's great interview, Howard, and uh, I'm a gay guy, and I'm in love with Chris. Oh, thank you so much. If Chris was gay, <laughs> if, he, if, if he went into a coma and woke up gay, <laughs> would you be with him? Of course I would. What would oh, you gl do gl to him? Gl 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 <laughs> <laughs> what action would you fantasy? Do you fan? Do you do you fantasize that Chris would give you anal, or you would give him anal? <laughs> but I wonder, does he masturbate to Chris? <laughs> do you ever masturbate to Chris? Um, no, I have not. Oh. Oh, well, that's a shame. <laughs> yeah, really. But I would. After this interview, I will. All right, very good. All right, that's fair enough. All right, I guess he's not comfortable saying what he do to you. <laughs> that's okay. Uh, <laughs> pleasure meeting you. I, what an what was that sound? Uh, that was him having sex with you. <laughs> 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 he's digging your scene. <laughs> uh, listen, Chris, we could talk, we could enter it up all day. Thanks. I loved the entering, and I loved it. I loved having you here. Thank you for Thank playing Thank you for having me. It's very kind of you. Everyone go out and get the new album, of course. That goes without saying. Uh, Coldplay's new album, Milo Xyloto, is in stores now. For more information, go to coldplay.com. And uh, go see Coldplay in a town near you. I yeah. mean, you guys are on the road, right? Well, not yet. We've got to think about that, but I'm sure we will be. I hope so. Hopefully, yeah. I mean, you're going to get bored sitting at home. Stay tuned for details. You're staring at the wall. <laughs> okay. Hey. I was hey, home, man. <laughs> we were talking a long time. Though. Really? An hour and a half. Really? Yeah. Like best, though. Yeah, you're a fabulous interview. Thank you. For real? Yeah. Oh, yeah. thanks so much. He's great. Right, great. Great stuff. Thanks, really Robert. Thank great. you so much. No, that was a lot of fun. Okay. No, I hope you enjoyed it. I was like, <laughs> uh-oh. Okay. No, we're big fans. We love, yeah. we love having you. Yeah, likewise. Yeah, yeah no, this is great. I was great. researching you guys yesterday. It was interesting. Uh -oh. Researching? What do you find what, what, on what us? What comes up when you Google us? <laughs> oh, it's just interesting to know, like, you were in the Air Force, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. They I got was, real uh, stuff out there. Yeah, huh? you're a nurse. Yeah. I was a general. Was. That probably didn't come we up. We served together. I'm not comfortable talking. To <laughs> 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 be honest. Really? Yeah. 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 My military. Yeah. Killed a lot of yeah. That's what I could talk about. You can see I'm a warrior. <laughs> um, well, thanks, guys. Yeah, great. Yeah. Thank you for doing this. Oh, it's a really pleasure. wonderful. Oh, okay. No, that was a real, great. real hey, our special. Our is such a big fan. He, uh, he's been asking us. Well, <laughs> thanks for allowing. Yeah. Yeah. You know thanks for allowing us. He listens to us. That helps. Yeah, that oh, was thanks. Fun. Thanks. It was a great interview. Really a lot. No, yeah, a lot of fun. A lot of fun. We hope that we didn't force you down too many areas that you were. I wish we had. With. <laughs> hey, you know. Uh, <laughs> it's I, 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 I just, I just don't answer. <laughs> that's the way to handle it. Yeah. Well, that's like my, my sister once said to me, I'm not coming on your show and taking my top off. I said to my sister, I go, are you out of your fucking mind? I go, what part of you would think, A, that I'd ask you that, and B, couldn't you say no to me? Yeah. If, yeah. <laughs> or do you really want to come in here and take your top off? It was crazy stuff. But, uh, no, I looked up at the clock and I saw that an hour and a half one. Yeah, I realized we should probably, cool. we should probably take a commercial. Cool. It flew. Yeah, it flew. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, a lot Thank of fun. Thank you. All right, thanks, Alex. See you Thanks so much. Thanks right. yeah. Thanks, thanks, thanks hearing you. Chris, may I ask you about the interview real quick? Sure. So I saw a transformation take place with you today. Right. You know, beforehand, a lot of nerves, a lot of trepidation. But yes. All of a sudden, it was like you were having this very comfortable conversation with Howard. What I'm happened? I was still a bit nervous. So. Really? Uh, what's the question? Well, I mean, you gave it back. When did that transformation You told me not to be place? nervous. Okay. I did. Yeah. <laughs> no, but what about Howard made you so comfortable in there to, to the point where you were uh, yentering it up? Uh, what? They're very sweet. They're, they're very good at their job, right? It's their job to make people like me forget that you're being interviewed. Absolutely. And just chat. How did today compare with some of the other interviews you've done over the years? It was fifth best ever. <laughs> Who are right. the other top four? I can't tell you that. All right, thanks. No, it was fun. Thank you so much. Good luck with your new album. Right. Thanks a lot. See you later.
Dude, by the way, Jason in that Coldplay interview was cackling the whole time. It is slightly distracting. Yeah, yeah, and the fact there were people like, on the phone saying they didn't like Jason laughing. I, I wasn't aware of it. Did you see me, like, when they put the yeah, camera, yeah, yeah. it was kind of like I was practically on his lap. Like, I wasn't yeah, in my normal spot. It was louder than ever. Sorry, well, you, I've asked you guys a thousand times to give me those headphones. Yes, great. It's, 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 it's great. Listen, Howard. It's great. Great interview. It was great. It was loud and everything. The only complaint I had was... I could just hear Jason annoying his laugh throughout the whole interview. Yeah, Jason must be a big Coldplay fan because he was in here the whole time taking pictures. Oh, I pictures. didn't even notice. Uh, I noticed here and there because he seemed in t to be in here a lot. Uh, and then uh, afterwards, everyone said um, Jason's laugh was and cackling was annoying. And I said uh, I didn't even he was uh, that to I call attention. Yeah, to himself. yeah. He was, uh, who knows? But I didn't. I didn't even hear him doing that. I didn't notice it. I didn't either, was, but there were, there, you know what? We've had more than one call coming in saying, can Jason please stop laughing in the uh, background? Really? I get chills. I think that's just because you find me attractive. Well, wow. you, you are a handsome man, I'll be honest with you. <laughs> so, so I went and I played that to the band. Should we leave you two alone? Well, I like his look. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what about, well, I'm, I'm not saying I'm gay. I just like how you look. I, I wish I could look like that. Yeah. You look great, man. Don't be so down on yourself. Uh, yeah, well, you're look very at that fun. head of hair. Yeah. People would kill for that. <laughs> yeah. so, so, so then I played that to the rest of the band, that one little loop thing. And then I went into the bathroom because uh, because they were playing football. And, uh, <laughs> Sounds like they play a lot of games, these guys. No, this is just one story. Right. And then in the bathroom, there was like a good echo, and that's where the... Your skin, oh yeah, your skin, man. Do. The chorus bit come out. Yes. And then I went back in the room, and they said, okay, let's go and work on it. Why are you frustrating me? Play, play a, okay. a little bit of it. Come on, a little more than he that. He was just telling you how it went. Okay. Yeah, don't you want to hear a little of that? Just so I would love to. String it together. Look at the stars, look how they shine for you, and all the things you do, yeah, they were all yellow, I came along, I wrote a song for you, and all the things you do, and it was called yellow. And it was all yellow. And your skin, oh yeah, your skin and bones turn into something beautiful. And you know, you know I love you so. You know I love you so. Wow, that is yeah. beautiful. Oh, thanks, man. Now, that is a romantic song. Yeah. Were you in love with someone at the time no. you wrote that? That's no. not about a specific girl. No, it's about all girls. But I imagine when you write a song like that, girls went nuts when you would perform it. Because that song <laughs> went like double platinum, right? Like as soon as it came out, as soon as it was released. I it did okay. Yeah, it sounds to me like you didn't have a big struggle. Like, in other words, you guys got together, it all clicked, you got a record deal. I no, mean, it took a while, but not as long as for some people. We were lucky. Did you shop around all the like? Did you did, did you perform in clubs, invite A and R guys down? I mean, how do you actually we get? Got, yeah, we did all that. And we got you know we got like everyone does rejected a bunch and. Do you laugh at the fuckers who rejected you? No, we actually signed with one of the fuckers who rejected us. Well, he, he came back. He came back. <laughs> he, he gave it a second lesson. He, yeah, it was, yeah, and I wouldn't speak to him. And, <laughs> and the rest of the band were like, you've got to speak to this guy. He, he feels terrible. He, he knows he, want, you know, he wants to sign you now. And I was like, no. Was no part of what drove you to say, hey, to all the people who rejected you, look at us now. Like, look, we're going to be huge successes. So they, I, I know this is going to work. Uh... No, I, I don't You're think... You're not a beta, I think I'll probably agree with him. You're not a But we didn't angry. have this song at the time. <laughs> yeah, I see. We didn't have this song, so whoever signed us had to kind of see a promise. Did, did you come close to quitting the business ever because you felt like this is just a disaster for me? I'm not even getting anywhere? Uh, I mean... Every day, think about, think like that a little bit. But but did you ever have a deadline? Like, if I don't make it by, I'm going to give up. Fifty really? was your deadline. <laughs> Smart man. Let's keep waiting around. So that song becomes a hit. You start. Well, first of all, you had obviously gone with the band. You perfected your craft. Yeah. You guys went to clubs. You played. When girls would hear that song, they wouldn't go berserk for you. I mean, sexually, there was no period of time. I no, I don't know, man. I mean, everything I read about where you Where was is, he performing this that they were... Is that at an all-boys school, I oh, believe. I, yeah. I mean, seriously. Where, I mean, what, women did not respond to these love songs? A lot of 
the hookers I was seeing lowered their rates. That is true. <laughs> Have you ever been with a hooker? Many times. Most really? Weeks. No. Is that how you lost your virginity? <laughs> <laughs> were you a late bloomer sexually? Yes. You were? Yeah. 29. No, come on. Stop it. Like 20, 20. I was raised very religious. Yes, I know that. Yeah. What religion? I'm not, well, I'm not really sure. People keep asking me that. You mean you studied religion, but you don't know what it was? Well, it was, you know, Christian, but right. there's so many branches of that now. I don't know which branch we were on. Really? Are you a religious man? Uh, not any more religious. I'm, I believe I'm a spiritual person, You I believe guess. when we die, we visit a guy in the sky kind of thing? I believe when you die, you get a tribute concert. Uh, no, come but seriously, That's do you it. believe that there is a heaven and a hell? I, there's definitely, I don't believe in a hell. That's what made me stop being religious. Well, do you take your children to church or do you join, do you want them to get religious training? No, I think uh, I think it's important to show that there's all these different kind of religions and this person believes that and you can believe whatever you want. That's what, my... Opinion. So what do you do if you want your children to get religion tra religious training and you want them to sort of embrace all religions and get the concept of God? Where do you, where would you take your kids to learn that? Uh, that's a good question. I I, I've been sort of doing the nihilist approach of like, I'm not taking them anywhere. So they're not going to be raised in any kind of religious way? No, not like strict of any religion, no. What if your wife says... What I, about yours? Um, my, I was against my children being raised with any type of religion. Yeah. My wife at the time was uh, very uh, concerned about that and decided to bring them to a temple. Right. And they are very... They, my, my children do have religion. Right. They, they, you know, they believe in God and they have a religious yeah. uh, background. And they well, say that's not to me, the same. Religion is not the same as believing in God or faith, is it? But they actually have religion. And they, and they actually are grateful their mother took them. Right. Uh, they say it was the right decision for, uh, that they would have been upset if they didn't have that in their lives. Okay. So do you feel bad? I, I just feel wrong. I mean, I guess... I, I guess <laughs> you were very wrong. I, I found religion to be divisive. I found yeah, it to too. be a, a terrible thing in my life. Uh, it was boring. It, I had no feeling for it. The people who ran the organization were bad. It caused a lot of fights as a kid. Did you fight as a kid for anything? Did you get in a lot of fist fights and stuff? I got in a, a few. Did you kick some ass or were you... No, I, well, one time... I still have, I, funny, I was just showing my daughter this scar I have on my hand from trying to punch someone's head and I, I missed. Yeah, I have one too. And I hit the wall. Yeah. <laughs> so that was my last experience. So you, so now, now, now. But I want to talk about religion one, because uh, faith is different, right? Right. Okay, so I'm not saying this, I don't believe in anything, I'm just saying I don't believe it has to be this, or if you believe that, then the other person's going to hell, all that crap. Yeah, I'm with you on that. Yeah. Well, yeah. I was just wondering, I mean, how do you expose your children to, or, I don't know, I don't, what do you do? You don't know what to do. Yeah, you just say, I don't know. We don't, <laughs> none of us know is the other thing. The song Clocks, when did you write that? Uh, um, 2002. And is that another 10-minute like, thought process, or is yes, that work? Yes, like 15. 15 minutes. I bet you that aggravates a lot of people. Like, oh, yeah, but, yeah, but they, you're only focusing on the, like, the three songs that have been hits. You're not talking about the 7,000 that no but one why, ever heard. But why do, the hits, why do the hits come so quickly? What is I that? Know, like, I, get, I don't know why. Where were you when clocks came into your head? That, that you uh, in Liverpool. With, in Liverpool. What yeah. were you doing at the time? Uh, writing. And I assume your, your bandmates were on their video games again? While no, no. Uh, <laughs> 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 no, no, come on. I mean, really, what is with these guys? A get band is about... A, a Those wankers. Those wankers. <laughs> When was the last time you said wankers, Robin? <laughs> I don't think she's ever first. said it. Yeah. Wow. No one says that in America, right? <laughs> no. You got any guys for Robin? I want her. Please. I want to hook her up with there a guy. I met a nice guy last night you'd like, yeah. Really? really? Well, when yeah. can they meet? <laughs> Thursday, 6 p.m. Okay. <laughs> so, so, so let me understand something. You, 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 um, let, let's get back to the song Clocks. Okay. All right. Because it's a hit. And I like to know about this. I okay. love the genesis of it. You're sitting around in Liverpool writing. Like in other words, it's one of your times to sit and write. Mm -hmm. well, how does this come to you? Okay, this. I'll switch over here. All right, is going this over to the piano. To you? This no, is no, I love talking about. I love music. Stuff. I love. I love to know about these. No one songs. really asked me about this. Well, I'm asking you about it. For Christ's sake. I got you here. I'm going to ask you. And don't worry. I'll ask you about your wife, too. My wife has a crush on your wife. I'm talking about when I met my wife 12 Vice years person. ago. Let's make it happen. She, you're not kidding. She, I, my, my wife's not into other women, but the way she talks about Gwyneth Paltrow, it's weird. Your wife's very beautiful, though, isn't she? She is very beautiful. Isn't she young enough to be like your... My granddaughter. Right. No. Listen, there's only... He a raised her, and then he married her. <laughs> That's right. Uh, no, she's, she is much younger than I am. Where's the calendar? Show him a picture. Oh, here, look, look, here. I'm a photographer now. I, I, we are raising money for North Shore Animal League, and here is my wife on the cover, wow. and, of course, photographed by me. Wow. No, I'm multi-talented. You're, you're only good at music. I have many talents. Um, go back to... Um, 
clock. The song clocks, okay. All right, where are you? Uh, a place called Par Street in Liverpool. So we went to Liverpool, obviously, for all the same reasons everyone does, to kind of get some Beatles vibes, as it were. Are the Beatles your heroes? Uh, one of them. Right. I, I have a lot, though. Are they the best group that ever existed? Uh, they're one of them. One of them? Well, yeah. who are your Who's other better? influences? Well, you've got to put Stevie Wonder and the Stones and... Right. I mean, there's so many. That's right. Oh, it's Bob Marley. There's no number one with you. Well, probably Bob Marley is number one. Really? Oh. Did you yeah. ever think of uh, reggae as a, a full-time career? Or Michael Jackson. Uh, Michael thought... Jackson? Yeah, we were having a conversation about Michael Jackson yesterday. He's like, I hated his music. He doesn't think I much like of it. I don't like Michael Jackson. And Why? I keep telling him he is alone I don't in this feel feeling. his music. What is your favorite Michael Jackson song? Um, Billie Jean. I never got Michael Jackson. That's it. Well, I... you're just an idiot then. I am. Yeah, well, <laughs> hey, fine. I, I keep I, trying call... to tell him. But his musical... Well, listen. When I'll you, tell you respond why. to someone's music, is it really idiotic not to no, like music? No, it's not idiot. That's right. the whole thing right. about music. So I'm not an idiot. No, you're not an idiot. Thank you. Make that clear to everyone. Well, you call everybody else an idiot. If I think they like something you don't No, like. that's not true. But I think uh, Dan. what well, I like about Dan. him and Bob Marley is that you can, anywhere in the world, people like it. Well, it doesn't matter except me. Uh, except, <laughs> except you. But, There's this one pocket. But even you would like one song, right? Well, I love Bob. A no woman, no cry. Yeah. Get back to clock. Okay. All right. So you're sitting around. You're in Liverpool. You want inspiration. You went. Okay. This is actually. Uh, so I had this. And, and I showed that simple thing to Johnny, who plays guitar, and he, he was there very early, and he was playing guitar, and he, he came up with the chords underneath. That is a powerful little riff there, right, yeah. when you have something like that. But then he put the chords under it, and then the whole song came out, like, real quick. Do a little, please. Okay. <clears throat> Now you're, you know, like, you really? never had a yeah. piano lesson? Say what? You never had a piano lesson. I had someone when I was seven for a year, and then my teacher left uh, That's amazing to, to, me. to get married, I think. Oh, I mean, if I could do that. I mean, th every guy wants to be able to do that. I feel every, every guy would prefer to be guitar first. Maybe, yeah, that's Guitar's true. Guitar's the most sexy, and then... Yeah, and then the piano, but that is such... A, listen, it's an aphrodisiac to women. I mean, that's... I think every guy has the fantasy, I'll write a song like that. If I could play like that, I would get the woman. I, and, 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 and it's, it's such an amazing thing to be able to run around and do that kind of stuff and think that there's a song in your head. I, I don't know. I'll just, I, really? I yeah, mean, that I wish I could do that. Yeah, that whole to songwriter, you know, e I mean, I guess it takes an 11-year-old to say, yeah. I'll be able to do that. What is you it? know, because it is daunting if but you look, think about it from this thing. It's more daunting now, funnily enough. Yeah, uh, that that's time, what I'm And I think it was good to have 10 years without anybody really commenting because... I had a few teachers who were really encouraged. They were like, keep, keep writing. You're mm. really good. But Well, you're hitting on a point. Yeah. Okay, a lot of these kids today who want instant stardom, I'm talking about like American Idol. Right. In a way, they don't have those years where, yeah, no. okay, they're talented. They can play piano, but they've got to develop. You yeah, can't. yeah. And, it's, and you already, if you put your video on YouTube, now you get slagged off by everybody <laughs> right. before you've even hit feel 14. Do you get do you get criticized? Of course, very much so. Yeah, yeah. Right? Does it get to you? Uh, occasionally, it does. I get frustrated because sometimes it obscures all the positives. Maybe that's me, or maybe that's being British. Like today, I didn't sleep so much, so things feel more negative. But do, do you feel underappreciated as an artist? No, go. I mean, we we couldn't ask for more, really. So, but when a fellow rock star comes out and says, "Ah." Oh, Coldplay, fuck them. You know, like yeah. the, the, that guy from uh, Oasis or somebody. He's always yeah, criticizing well, everyone. But but th does that hurt you? And, is, and you're like, oh, come on. Are you really no, the inter, the inter musician stuff is just, you know, that's just like boxes before a game making it all hyped up. Yeah, but you're not like that. You don't. No, I don't, I don't subscribe to that. But, but uh, the public with critics. Well, when someone has a really valid point, it bums me out because if I agree with it, but but uh, what when has someone said about you that you agreed with that was negative? Uh... 
you know, at certain times, like they need to improve this part or they need to work harder on this bit or whatever it was at the time, lyrics or, you know, colorfulness of music. But isn't that up to the, I mean, you're the artist. You're the one who's sitting and creating this stuff. Yeah, How but sometimes sometimes that? a music critic can point something out. Some, a good one can know Can't what they're talking Can't you get neurotic? And we, I mean, if you really wanted to go about it before you release an album, you can call in all the music critics and say, do you guys agree with this song? And uh, yeah. and you could sit there and perfect it to No, the it end. is impossible. I mean, I, I everyone tells me, Funny enough, all the older guys who were all so sweet to us and stuff, is uh, they always warned us, no, this is what's going to happen eight years in or ten years in. There'll be a backlash. Well, there's a backlash where you have to be very careful who you listen to and who you don't listen to, and th that's all coming true. Can critics destroy an artist? Can you basically say, you know, I've got a good life, I've got a great wife, I've got kids, I've got enough money, I don't need to go work. Yeah. Could they destroy your spirit and you say, you know, fuck it, I don't, I'm sick of the criticism, I don't want to be here anymore? They could if we didn't play live, yeah. Because, right. because anything that anyone's written is just fucking blown out of the water as soon as you go on stage because you're like well all, all these people have not only come to see us they've paid money they've gone through parking they've gone through traffic they've they're all fucking here and they've paid to be here so why why would i care about some yeah, why aren't the fans more important than some guy well that's what i'm saying they are but I'm, but I'm saying that they, they you don't necessarily sometimes you can get into a place where you're in a little bubble and you don't actually meet anyone you don't meet any of your mm -hmm. listeners you mm -hmm. you only really see the bad shit. Have any of your songs ever become hits that you thought were terrible? Uh, one. Which one? A song called Speed of Sound. So you think Speed of Sound is a bad song? No, I think we just did a shit recording. <laughs> Play a little of Speed of Sound, please. I don't really want to. Yes, you must. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That, I, like, I like it, but we just didn't get it quite right on record. Really? And, yeah. you, and you can't bear to listen to it? No. Is that why you can't bear to play it? Yeah. Wow. Really? Yeah. It pains you. It pains now me. You have to we, play this in concert. You're smiling. No, you we joke. Don't. You don't. You don't play it. <laughs> we don't play it. Wow. Because, because of your feelings about the song. Yeah, because like I said, if, if uh, an audience can pick up real fast if, you, if you're not convinced by something. So why not redo it in concert to the point that you like it? Why not set the record straight here and show me how you think it should be done? No. <laughs> do it. Just don't do, it, be a just do another song. I'm not being Man a pussy. Man up. I'm fucking manned up. I want you to fucking play the song now the way it should be played and do it the right way that you <laughs> think it should be heard. I feel like I'm in school. You want me to come over there? Yeah, come over there. <laughs> no, I'm afraid of you. I'll take you. Uh, Gary, bring in my gun. <laughs> no, man, you know, you, don't, you don't listen. You know, I bet you have shows which you thought weren't so great. Never. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think every show blows, quite frankly. And I, and I agree with you. But I would think, I, uh, listen, I'm not, a, uh, I'm not a recording artist. I would think that you would want to get this song out to the public the way that you think it should be. No, because we've written better it's ones since song. then. It's, it's good, but we've written much better ones since then. All right, then play a little bit of Scientist. The Scientist, okay. All right, go ahead. You want to sing it? Yes, please. Come up to meet you and tell you I'm sorry. Jesus Christ, that's wonderful. Uh, you never got into drugs or anything? Uh, a little bit. 
What? Did I think, you? I think it's just so boring to talk about that. You know why I'm asking you that? Because I feel, I, I, it's funny, when you were singing, for some reason I was thinking about a guy I've had on the show many times. Right. The, the lead singer of the Stone Temple Pilots. So is that Scott? Yes, yeah, Scott Weiland. Yeah. And I think about how brilliantly talented this guy is, mm -hmm. and the great song, and the great voice. And I'm sitting there watching you, and you got this great voice. And, and by the way, you're lucky, too, because not only can you play, but you can sing. Right. And how many guys who are songwriters who can't sing and they can't perform their own music? It's got to be frustrating. Right. So I, 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 it destroys me inside that these guys sort of piss away their gift and get into drugs and, and, and things like that. It destroys the spirit, I feel. Uh, Where do you stand on that? He's he done pretty good, though. No, he? he's done great. So, what? Are you a big drug guy? No, no. Um, I think a lot of people who tour have like sleeping pill stuff. Right. Did you get into that? Yeah. And but, but but I don't. But it's not like it's just. I mean, but so do people who work in banks and stuff. I don't really believe in the whole kind of selling records by saying how much pills you take. Right, yeah, in fact, I used to... But you're not getting propofol to go to sleep, right? right? But I used to think <laughs> there were recording artists who actually boasted about their drugs because it made them sort of quote-unquote cool. It well, it roll, still, it yeah. does. That's what pisses me off. It's like yeah. people still believe in that rock and roll myth. Yes. And it's bullshit. And it, it, there is no such thing as cool. Cool is like, to me, is following what you believe in. And that's it. It's I, not about like I have to be I have to take the same drugs as that guy and wear the same pants and I got very, I hate that. I got very depressed when I was a kid and the Beatles went through their drug phase. Like right. it was the music was fabulous and interesting. But I got scared that something was gonna happen to these guys that I worshipped. Right. Like I was really nervous for them because right. they were going into an area where they could lose their mind. Right. And so that's why I ask you. It seems to me like you have it all together. You're not. Uh, you're not one of these you're not guys. You're tortured. Or yeah. I just don't believe in sh talking about that stuff. You know. So you had a problem, is what not you're a saying. Problem. No, not a problem. No. Well, no. I don't know. I don't you know. don't know if you had a problem? I don't really. I, All right, so you were on the road, you couldn't sleep, and you decided to take no, sleep. This control. is not a good avenue for me. Why is it not good? I'm not, I'm not, I'm not understanding. Because it's so cliched and old. So you did have a problem. I think everybody has problems. some kind of problem. But you're afraid that rock... I don't believe that just because you're in a band, it makes your problems more interesting. You're afraid that it will actually encourage people to do drugs. No, I'm afraid that it's just kind of uh, annoying. Annoying. Why are you so afraid of talking about your life? If it, why would you think that anything I, you have I to sing say about is annoying? It. I sing you about do. It. You sing beautiful love songs. Right. You don't write love songs to your wife? Uh, she's in there somewhere. She is? Of course. Have you written a love song to her? Uh, not that it's on record. They're, they're all a bit too kinky. You've never recorded a love song. <laughs> wait a second. You've never recorded a love song. See, again, I don't follow that. Why can you write all wait. these great love songs? And obviously you've been inspired by women in your life. Right? Uh, right. Okay. These are not imaginary women when, you, when, you're, when you've, you've experienced women. Well, sometimes they are. Why wouldn't you record a song? It seems like there's a lot of fear here in the marriage. Like, I'm not going to go public. I'm not even going to write a so well, love but song. But we're not talking about but that. But the song, um, um, I, th I think, well, I've got to think now. Green Eyes. Right. That is about Gwyneth. That's actually way before we met, the song. Shit. <laughs> you thought you were onto something. But why, Chris? I don't understand. Why wouldn't you s record a song? I do, I do. I don't, I don't know why you're saying I don't. Why wouldn't you record a song about your wife? You said, I've never put on record a song about my wife. No, you said a specific love song. I don't really know, man. I've got no answer for you. You don't, I don't have an I answer. I get so uncomfortable with this line of questioning. You do? Everything that's on a record of ours is about my life. So if there's a love song in there, then you can put, join the dots. But you, you will never cop to it. I, yeah, I don't. I don't want to cop to it. You don't want to cop to it because why? Because a song, once you release it, is it can be whatever anyone wants it to be. Would you ever go to your wife and, and go to her in the morning after you've been up from two in the morning writing yeah. and say, honey, I just wrote a beautiful song about you and I want to play it to you. Would you ever be... When are they getting all schmuck? are making me <laughs> tremble. Would you ever do that? I, I, probably. You'd have done that. <laughs> I'm, I mean, that's got to turn your wife on, I'm right? I'm not good at talking about this, Howard. What do you mean? About writing music about your wife? Uh, so, yeah, but it, it's all different because you know who my wife is. Oh, so what? Who cares? And, and they don't walk red carpets. I'm just, saying, yeah. I'm just saying to you, say, <laughs> everything we sing is real, so when there's love Comes in there, from the heart. You can, you, can, you can put two and two together, but... All right, listen to me. Let's, play, let's play a little bit of a song because people love your music. Some and then people. we're going to get to the new album. All right. <laughs> all right. Uh, Viva La Vida. Talk okay. about that. Another 10-minute job? That's my favorite. That's your favorite song that you yeah. ever wrote. Mm -hmm. Why? Apart from one called Paradise right. uh, and The Scientist. 
I right. like I like a lot of them. You do. <laughs> you enjoy them. Are they? Here's uh, so, uh, songwriters go. They're like my children. They Billy Joel are. told me it's like his kids. Yes. You know what I mean? Like, uh, like each of these songs he protects on this. You own all your own music, right? Uh, no, we don't own hardly any of it. Really? You don't own your own. I don't think you you sold off, manager. You but sold off the rights. Uh, we don't own it for at least 20 years or something. I see. Ooh. But you own the publishing. No, we own a bit of the publishing. Why is that? Did you sign a bad deal? <clears throat> no, we signed a good deal. We own quite a lot of the publishing, but we don't own much of the recording. I see. Yeah. People uh, always miss, they always think bands, that's why people always think bands are a lot richer than they are, because they never remember that bit. How long did it, I, yeah, I, I, I always assume you guys were walking around with billions. No. Viva La Vida, well, how did that come to you? Quickly? Uh, that came pretty quick. Yeah, except the, there's a, ch a chanty bit that everyone sings in concerts. That, that came a couple of months later in New York. Yeah. So you have this song. Mm -hmm. you, it comes to you quickly. Yeah. You right away know it's in your head and it's a, it's a hit. I didn't know. No, I, I thought it was good. I'll play a little. Okay. And this one I had like 55 pages of words, so that kind of... Oh, really? Yeah. Because I had this idea of like... A, uh, yeah, well. Do you write the, where do you write these lyrics? On a paper bag or something? On my hand, and then it goes on my phone. Do you ever save some of, the, like, when you, do you ever handwrite these things, like, yeah. on, a, on a piece of paper? Yeah. Do you save those scraps of paper? No, not really. You, you don't have a lyric book or no. Why don't you stuff? give them to me, and I will sell them. <laughs> you, <laughs> wouldn't that make a lot of money, no? I don't think so. All right. Uh, so, so that one's uh, this, yeah. So to keep going. Come on, don't, you don't <laughs> stop that one. Everyone loves this. The people okay. are, are passing out. I used to rule the world. Seas would rise when I gave the word. Now in the morning I sleep alone. Sweep the streets I used to own. That was when, when I ruled the world. I can't remember the last bit. Beautiful song. I don't play piano when we play that live, you see. That is beautiful. Thanks, man. See, if I play piano like that, I'd go to parties and play. Yeah. And uh, I would get lots of chicks. But you're, already, you're doing pretty well, man. I'm doing pretty well. <laughs> well you have I mean, to go in and talk. Listen, that's how you met your wife. You were playing in concert, right? And right. she saw you, and she, yeah. was, she was blown out. I mean, who, what woman wouldn't swoon? It's a fabulous thing, okay. this piano playing. If you could do it like you. Yeah. <laughs> well, how did that work? Because I really don't know the, the... The love story? Legend. The legend is <laughs> that Gwyneth was a fan. And she saw you. And listen, she probably went berserk that night. And the two of you got it on. And that was history. <laughs> is it hard to keep a marriage going when you're a rock star? You're on the road. How many days a week? How many days out of the year are you on the road? Uh... Dep depends which year, but maybe up to 200, maybe. But when you're on the road 200, it's yeah. hard to be a father. It's hard. Mm. I mean, your career takes up a tremendous amount of time. Yeah. And your band is also a family. Right. Like, you've got to satisfy that family. Yeah. You've got to satisfy your life with your wife and uh -huh. your kids. How the fuck are you balancing all of this? Seriously, I, I mean, how do you balance that? Well, I don't necessarily know if we do. You don't? We tr just try week to week. And, and, and Do you have any rules about how often you two should see each other? Because she works, you work. Yeah, and it's about kids as well. So yeah. right. So there's no rules, but you just gotta. But you know, I mean, some people say we don't want to be apart for too long. What is that? Too like long? Like, do you have the two-week thing yeah. where you never go longer than two weeks without seeing each other? 
I thought we, we don't have any rules written down. Or anything. Yeah. Right, but well, it's how, hard. How long have you been apart? Six years. <laughs> <laughs> but doesn't that keep it hot? <laughs> doesn't that keep it hot, Chris? Really? Smoking. I mean, it really does. No, seriously, I, I would think it's different. I, I know even with my career and coming up as a radio guy. Yes. I was consumed with career. Yes. I felt there's only one way I'm going to make it. I've got to put everything I've got into this yeah. career. And the career becomes your 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 obsession your right. mistress and i know but seriously but a, a musician 200 dates a year well that's 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 not necessarily always every year and that's not even yeah you could certainly afford not to go out on the road 200 days out of the year i mean you you could stop working today but do you like it i mean no, i mean I do you I love, love being out love there the, the thing is uh everything everything good in my life has come from the band so so we treat that respectfully because with all with all your compliments about how I look, I, you know, my life is much better because of music. It's, right. it's not all based on looks. <laughs> you know so, what I mean? So if your wife said to you, hey, I don't want you going out 200 dates a year, 100 certainly enough, you could, you could limit it because the kids need to see you and stuff. Sure. You will say no. This is my career comes no, no, first. No, 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 no. No, I'd say yeah. You would give it up. Yeah. Sure. But she doesn't put that pressure.